My next guest tonight starred in three of TV's best known series Law and Order, Sex and the City, and The Good Wife. His new movie is White Girl. Please welcome Chris Noth. <laughs> Looks a damn debonair. Are you training to be one of the musketeers or something? I really like this. I really like that well, look. I, I, I grow it uh, in between uh, jobs, and uh, the longer it gets, the more I realize I'm unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> this is your so warning it, signal? Yes, it's so getting longer. When more effort is going into this than learning lines, you need to call your agent. Is that what's going on? Oh, dear. Now uh, you're uh, you don't you're like you don't like being called a television icon, which I understand. It's a very iconic thing to say, but <laughs> you are like a definitive New York actor. You've been some of the grass, the greatest New York TV series. Did you just did you just, just want to be a New York guy? Was this like where you hoped you'd be working most of your career? I uh, I came to New York and I, I I didn't really understand how I could go to L well at that period it was you studied acting in New York and maybe you would do some theater and do more theater and then perhaps someone would see you and you would go to L A and maybe do a movie or TV right but you started in New York was sort of the blueprint that I had gotten into my head yeah, and you then got to I make an, am an amazing career here not everybody gets to do that because the mothership in L A just is always calling I was a little intimidated by L A uh, I didn't quite know how to deal with I still am not sure I know how to deal with it and I lived there half the time my son goes to school there it's a it, I think you have to learn how to live in LA in a way you you have to have a place that you like to live you have to have a car you like to drive because that's really where you live <laughs> that's where you live <laughs> um, but I was very lucky my whole career has taken place in New York City it is true both my parents worked in New York City uh, I've come to it since I was a child I now, studied law and there. order started in 1990. 1990 okay so how has New York changed like what's the law and order that you guys were shooting in compared to the the the, the, the New York that we all enjoy now um let me give you an example of the New York uh, that I knew then that could not exist now I can remember walking down 8th Avenue which at that time you had people coming out of the theater. You had neighborhood stuff going on. You had a lot of the peep shows. You had guys, you know, loose joints. I got this, I got that. Watch the cards, watch all of it happening, you know, at the same time. And I'm walking down, people walking in the middle of the street. And as I'm walking, there is um, a guy in a laundry bin up to his neck in garbage with a TV that he had jerry-rigged into the lamppost and he's watching Johnny Carson. <laughs> and cops are walking by and we're all walking. And I was walking and I was about to, yeah, yeah. And it was like, then I looked at it, it was like a Beckett play. I mean, it was so... Like happy days. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, in, uh, I, you know, it was that, that was New York. It was room for eccentricity, let's put it that way. <laughs> Well, you were also in another iconic, uh, a totally different kind of New York uh, uh, show, Sex in the City. Yes. Okay. And there are actual uh, buses now that have the Sex in the City tour. I just don't understand. Are you it. on the Sex in the City tour? <laughs> I think that's the best by, you know, um, have you actually there in a dirty t shirt of, yeah, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you are Mr. Big, which yeah. I just found out, which I didn't Mr. know. Mr. Big, all right here. Mr. Big is called Mr. Big because when he's in the characters introduced, the girls say, oh, he's the next big thing. He's going to be the next Donald Trump. That's what it says. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Now, uh, one of the things uh, that... I I feel what I'm asking about is I want to ask about your mom, who I, I, I know uh, that she passed away this May at the age of 92, and, and yeah. I'm, I'm sorry about okay. that, but she was a real pioneer. She worked for CBS as one of the first um, uh, on-air female correspondents. Yes. What, w what was that like, having a mom as a reporter? Um, I was so young, and she was doing amazing things. She was a very competitive, uh, ambitious woman, very fierce. And I probably made her life miserable because I just, at that age, didn't give a darn what she, you know, how, uh, what she was doing, really. I mean, she was doing stories on Robert F. Kennedy, Mayor Lindsay, covering the riots. Yeah. Here she is. This is uh, Jean Paul. She was also a very beautiful woman who um, 
uh, after my father died, many men were falling in love with, and of course, she, you know, occasionally we'd see them at the house, and I'd have to weigh in on it. And <laughs> would she ask your opinion, so or would we just yeah, weigh she, in she regardless actually, she, of what she, she thought? She always would ask my opinion. I was like, get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Did you realize what a pioneer she was? Not at the time, no. And she never really, it was, uh, she didn't say that she was a pioneer. She was just doing it. She was just doing it. And um, I was living at that time. I didn't realize how hard it was for women, you know, uh, to be doing a job like that. It wasn't really something that computed to me. And um, I think um, I, I'm very proud of her. Very proud um, of her. Well. I'm sorry for your loss. And, and I'm happy for your memories. Yes. Yeah, such an inspiring mom. Now, the film that you're doing now is called White Girl, which is about a totally different type of New York. And it's about a, a girl who actually gets in trouble by sort of being adventurous in, in, yeah. in, in, in part of the town that she's not from. Right. I, I, and I think it reminded me also when I was young, before college, I took a year off and came to New York with my then girlfriend, and we moved to a section of Brooklyn. And there is that sense when you haven't lived in the city of coming to New York and there's just this exuberant sense of freedom. And that if you can make it here, if you can find a place to live, no matter where it is, you're just very brave and sometimes reckless. Mm -hmm. But it's, and to get lost in this city because all of a sudden you're part of something bigger than yourself and to find a way to live. And I think where this film takes place reminds me a little bit of, of what man, sections of Manhattan used to be like, mm -hmm. which is, uh, uh, Resonant of like a movie like Midnight Cowboy, mm -hmm. and um, she 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 takes risks and she goes places she hasn't been before, and and there's a price for her to pay, and you play her lawyer who tries to help her. Right. And uh, we have a clip right here, Jim. What's your relationship? Our, our relationship. How do you know? Him? Well, he's my lawyer. I, <laughs> I'm my neighbor. So you. Just want to help your neighbor. Well, I can't just sit by and watch him go to jail because he can't afford a good lawyer. I want to help. Well, okay. It does make a big difference to the judge when someone's there in court and actually cares about the person and is vouching for him. Especially uh, if that someone looks like you. I won't tell you what happens. Don't tell me what happens. I won't tell you what happens. Uh, well, uh, we got to go, but good luck with the facial hair and everything like I, that. I know. I, I'm hoping to cut it off soon. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Chris Noth, everybody.